Okay, guys, I have um, some more models here to hopefully finish up uh, the information for the first practical. This guy right here is this dude. I'm going to talk about him first. We'll do face and mediastinum on here. So if we look up here at the head, we can see temporal muscle, temporalis muscle, sorry. The masseter, so those are your two muscles of mastication. Some more muscles on here, of course, we have orbicularis oculi. Orbicularis oris around the mouth here. We have the corrugator supercilii muscle here in between the eyes. You have the rhizorus, which has been cut. Zygomaticus major, zygomaticus minor. Mentalis here on the chin. You can see the bucinator right behind the zygomatic and rhizorus muscle. This right here is the parotid gland. And then you have your parotid duct coming out of the parotid gland and dumping through the bucinator muscle into the oral cavity. This is your sternocleidomastoid muscle that's been cut. Here is your mandible, so this is a lower jawbone, and right underneath the mandible you can see the submandibular gland under the mandible. Here's your hyoid bone, omohyoid muscle, right here. You've got your left internal jugular vein, left common carotid artery. If you look under here, you can see anterior belly of the digastric, posterior belly of the digastric, stylohyoid muscle. So you can see that a little bit better. Stylohyoid right here. Here's your posterior belly of the digastric. This would be your sternohyoid muscle on top of your sternothyroid muscle underneath. Here's your mylohyoid muscle. You can see thoracic duct dumping into this venous system here. So this would be your left brachiocephalic vein. Here's your left internal jugular. And here's your left axillary, left subclavian vein, left axillary artery, be subclavian farther up. This is anterior, middle, and posterior scalene. Do some more neck structures here. Here's the thyroid cartilage with your laryngeal prominence. This would be your thyrohyoid membrane here. This is your cricoid cartilage. Cricoid cartilage again, cricothyroid membrane, and then your cricothyroid muscle. This is your thyroid gland, your trachea with the C rings, right common carotid artery right internal jugular vein, right subclavian vein, right axillary vein, right axillary artery, right brachiocephalic vein, and this is your right lymphatic duct, which you don't need to know. Here's your submandibular gland on the other side. You can um, see your stylohyoid nicely now that this piece of the jaw is missing right here. You can also see your external and internal carotid arteries now that they've split. Here's the tongue. Right underneath of that you have your sublingual gland and you can nicely see your mylohyoid muscle and your anterior belly, the digastric, as well as your geniohyoid and genioglossus muscle here. Okay, I think that's it for the neck. Let's do the mediastinum here. So if we look at the posterior body wall, we've taken all the organs out, including the great vessels, and we can see a whole lot of structures back here. Okay, I wanted to put some organs back in so you can kind of see how this sits. So this is looking at the mediastinum. You have trachea, right primary bronchus, left primary bronchus, esophagus, descending aorta. Now if we take those structures out, now you can see the structures that are posterior to those. Lots of different colors here. We've got blue, we've got green, we've got yellow, we've got reds, and we've got some muscles. So these blue structures here are all veins. 
You have posterior intercostal veins that are draining blood from the posterior muscles between the ribs. And they are bringing blood over to these large veins that run right up and down the vertebrae in the thoracic region. On the right side, these posterior intercostal veins dump into the azygous vein, which is this large vein on the right. On the left side, these posterior intercostal veins dump into two different veins, one here and one that comes up inferiorly. This one is called the accessory hemiazygous vein, and that's going to drain the top six ribs or so, posterior intercostal veins, and then it's going to take blood and dump it across into the right side, right into azygous vein. Azygous will come up and dump into the superior vena cava. From the lower few ribs, these posterior intercostal veins will dump blood into the hemiazygous vein. Hemiazygous vein will come up and shoot over to the right side and dump blood into the azygous vein. Then the azygous vein now takes all of that blood and dumps it into the superior vena cava. Running with your intercostal vein, you also have inter posterior intercostal artery and posterior intercostal nerve. This yellow structure is your sympathetic chain. You have your ganglia attached to each other by little trunk pieces. The whole thing together makes up the sympathetic chain. You have one on either side. Coming off of the sympathetic chain, you have your splanchnic nerves. These splanchnic nerves we will see on another model as well, but you can see them on this one right here. If you kind of pull this diaphragm down, you can see the greater splanchnic right here. So you can see that it has a bunch of contributions coming from the sympathetic chain, and then they all come together to form this nerve. The lesser splanchnic you can't see. It's a little bit, this is a little bit too high, so we'll see that on another model. One nice thing you can see here also is the distinguish, distinguishment between the muscles. So these are your intercostal muscles. These are innermost because they're covering the artery, vein, and nerve here. And these back here are actually external intercostal muscles because you're at the posterior part of the rib cage. This green structure right here is your thoracic duct bringing lymph fluid up from the cisterna chyli, which is located uh, right at the base of the diaphragm, basically, bringing it up and dumping it into the left side of the body into that venous system here, right where left internal jugular and left subclavian come together to form the brachiocephalic vein. Here's your innermost intercostals. Remember, innermost intercostals are always going to cover this intercostal artery, vein, and nerve. And you can see external intercostal muscles behind those artery, vein, and nerves. This is towards the back of the body, so these are external. If we look down at our diaphragm, we can see the central tendon very nicely. All this white, this is all the muscle. This hole is your caval hiatus. And if we look from below the diaphragm, you can see the esophagus coming through that esophageal hiatus. Here's your cable hiatus. Here's your central tendon. Okay, just a different chest plate. I had been looking for this one earlier when I was making the video on this, but I couldn't find it, so we'll just do it now. This is the inside of the anterior chest wall, so you can see internal thoracic artery and vein. This one's nice because it actually shows it anatomically correct, where you have one on both sides. Okay, so internal thoracic artery and vein, you've got some intercostal arteries coming off of there. Here's your transversus thoracis. You have your diaphragm where the fiber is going up. Transverse abdominis, fiber is going across. And you can see your umbilicus and your three umbilical ligaments. Median in the middle and medial out to the side. This is your rectus abdominis muscle and this is all rectus sheath. Turning it to the front, you can see again rectus abdominis, rectus sheath, linea alba, pectoralis major muscle, which has been cut, serratus anterior, external abdominal oblique. You can actually see your external intercostal muscles and your internal intercostal muscle fiber direction. So this chest plate is pretty good as well. 
external cloud of mastoid up here.